Welcome to another Patho video. Our topic today is transport of iron and regulation of iron levels in the body. This is the second of a three-part series entitled Iron and Iron Deficiency Anemia. As mentioned previously, the liver makes transferrin and secretes it into the plasma. Fe3 plus loads onto plasma transferrin after it leaves the enterocytes, or macrophages of the spleen. Transferrin is also made by the brain and testes, since proteins can't cross the blood-brain barrier or the blood-testes barrier. Most of the transferrin-bound iron will end up in the bone marrow, where it is used to make red blood cells. To a lesser extent, it is sent to the hepatocytes in the liver, which is the main storage organ for iron. Iron is high in the reticuloendothelial cells of the liver and spleen because these organs break down senescent erythrocytes and take on leftover iron from this process. Iron is also transported to body cells to be used to make myoglobin and iron containing cytochromes in the mitochondria. The cell transferrin receptor is a protein dimer of two identical subunits, 760 amino acids each. These dimers connect to one another by disulfide bridges. The transferrin receptor is embedded in the cell membrane. In the process of cells taking in iron, the monopheric or diaphoric transferrin binds to the transferrin receptor embedded in the cell's membrane the diaphoric version will bind to the receptor with higher affinity compared to monopheric or apotransferrin, which has no bound iron. After binding, both the iron-bound transferrin and transferrin receptor complex are internalized by the receptor-mediated endocytosis. This process involves invagination of the clathrin-coated pits and formation of a vesicle called an endosome. The transferrin receptor is not degraded, but is recycled back to the plasma membrane by way of exocytosis. In the cytoplasm, ferric iron is shuttled via an intracellular carrier and incorporated into ferritin, which consists of a complex protein of 24 different subunits that come together to form a sphere. Inside this sphere, many atoms of iron are stored. Over time, ferritin will complex with other ferritin to form clusters that are digested by lysosomes, leading to the production of hamasiderin, which is more insoluble form of iron. Inside the cell, carrier iron, ferritin, and hamasiderin are all in equilibrium. As mentioned, iron is very important for erythropoiesis. So it is important that iron levels in the blood do not get too low. If levels do get low, ferritin, which is inside cells, and the storage form of iron, can transfer its iron back to the blood. On the other hand, if iron levels get too high, it can become toxic to the body. In this case, more iron can be sequestered inside the cells and stored as ferritin to bring down iron blood levels. This regulation based on blood levels is mainly accomplished by alternating levels of the hormone hepcidin, which is made by the liver. Hepcidin's main action is to prevent the absorption of iron into the blood from the duodenum. Hepcidin also prevents the release of iron into the blood from macrophages in the liver and spleen that are breaking down senescent red blood cells. Both of these actions prevent blood levels of iron from rising. Hepcidin acts to downregulate the levels of ferroportin-1 in enterocytes and macrophages. Without ferroportin-1, iron stays inside the cells instead of entering the blood. When body stores of iron are high, and erythropoiesis is normal, the liver will produce more hepcidin. 
as the duodenal epithelial cells slough off, intracellular iron will be lost in the feces. When erythropoiesis is high and iron levels are low, hepcidin levels will drop so that ferroportin 1 levels will increase, bringing more iron into the blood. This summary shows the absorption, storage, and regulation of iron. This concludes the video, Iron and Iron Deficiency Anemia, Part 2. Thanks for watching.